Hey guys, welcome back to new video. In this video, I will show you how you can implement in-app subscriptions using the conversion SDK, which this video is actually also sponsored by. So thank you, conversion. You can also use that, by the way, to implement in-app purchases. But since the subscriptions are usually a little bit harder to deal with, I will actually focus on that. So first of all, what the heck is actually the conversion SDK? You can see I am on the conversion website, which is conversion.io link is in the description it's basically yeah i would call it a firebase for in-app purchases and subscriptions so they make all that stuff a lot easier if you decide to implement these in your app that you actually want to publish on google play so in the end most of us app developers have that one dream that one day we have that really good idea we implement it, we publish it, and then we, of course, also want to earn some money with it. In the best case, some passive income, which is, yeah, not easy to reach, but it is possible. And yeah, one of the best ways to actually monetize your app is by using in-app purchases and subscriptions. However, implementing that with a normal Google Play billing library, which you could also do, like just using the Google Play billing library, but that's a lot of work. And that's really not easy because there is so much you actually need to take care of and think of that it's often not the right choice to actually do that on your own because there are very cool SDKs like conversion. And ideally, if you actually implement in-app purchases and subscriptions in your app, then you should also have some kind of backend server that validates and verifies all the incoming purchases and subscriptions, because otherwise, yeah, people can easily abuse that. Then you also need to think of, okay, what happens if users actually cancel their subscriptions, if they pause their subscription, all that stuff. You see that there's so much stuff you need to consider. And here actually conversion comes into play because with that, you don't need to do any of that. And you just have a very simple SDK you can use to make all these checks. And what's even better is they bring you really nice insights on their dashboard. So in form of analytics, and they also offer A and B testing. So that means you can have similar products like product A and product B, and then you can check on your audience. So a part of your audience gets product A and another part gets product B. And then you can basically measure which product performs better. Like you could try to sell one product for like uh, $3 and the other one for four. And you can see, okay, with which product do I actually earn more money? And all that is stuff conversion offers you. So I can really recommend to check them out. If you want to follow through this video, you actually need an account on their website, which is free to start with. So yeah, let's actually jump right into it and see how that works. So just to show you what we will actually build here, let's open this app on my Android phone here. Let's wait a little bit. You can see I have two offers here. That's how conversion actually calls that. An offer is basically a set of different products you can basically put together and offer to your users. And yeah, this is actually an in-app purchase here. So just a one-time purchase, and this is a subscription. So I will focus on the subscription here in this video. If we click on that, then you will see we actually get this little billing dialog from Google Play. Um, that's just a test purchase right now. So you can see that would renew every five minutes, just so we can actually see, okay, that is really renewing here. And I use a test credit card. So if we now click one tab buy, and it's processing that. Okay, we subscribed. And then if we wait a little bit, you can see purchase successful. And it says, yeah, you got premium access. So that is basically what you will learn. We will, you'll be able to actually buy or subscribe to something and then also detect if you got that subscription or not. So let's actually get to the prerequisites because that's quite a lot here, to be honest. On the one hand, you sadly need to have a Google Play account, like a Play Console account where you can actually publish your app. And you can see here, that is what I actually already did because <laughs> that is something I can, of course, not show in the tutorial because Google needs to approve that. You need to set up everything here, which is not difficult, but it just takes a little bit of time to set that up. So you basically need an app in Google Play at least in the alpha track. So it doesn't need to be publicly available for all users, but it needs to be in the alpha track. So in-app purchases actually work. Okay, so now let's assume you uploaded your app to Google Play in the alpha track, they approved it, and you just added the very basic info here, like screenshots, app store listing, and all that 
data privacy stuff they want to know from you. Then what you need to do is you need to check this description because I will post this link here in the description because that's basically a step-by-step -step manual how you can link conversion with your Google Play account. So since I already did that, and you can only do that once in your Google Play console, I can show you that here, but it's, it's a very good description. You can see they have screenshots and you just do step-by-step -step what they tell you here. In the end, we create a so-called Google Play service account key. That is a key that will help uh, conversion to talk to Google Play because of course they both need to be in sync. In the end, Google processes our in-app purchases, but if we want to use like a third-party provider like conversion, then we need to have some kind of authentication mechanism between these two. So that in the end, conversion will just talk to the Google Play API to actually verify your purchases. Then if you actually followed through all these steps, then at the end, you will have this JSON file that, that you will get from your Google Cloud Console. That JSON file is your secret key. You shouldn't give that to anyone except for conversion because conversion will need that now to talk to your Google Play API. So just keep that key and we will now switch over to the conversion dashboard and I will show you where you can paste it, but also what we need to do before. So I actually opened that here, dash.conversion.io. So you just need to make sure that you Click sign up for free here on the main website. Since I am already logged in, I can't do that anymore, but I guess you know how to sign up to a website. So I will leave that out here. I already created a project here, which is called conversion prep. You won't have that. So as soon as you create an account there, they will prompt you to create a new project. This is very similar to Firebase. If you've used that before in Firebase, you also have like different projects. Like every Android app would have one project but I guess you can also link multiple apps to a single project. Not sure here, but yeah, you definitely have some kind of part projects here. If you would click new project, then you can simply do that here, entering your project name, clicking next, going to the dashboard here. Once you did that, you want to go to settings in the bottom left corner and you want to click on stores. Here under Google Play Console, this is the place where you need to paste this JSON file. Not the JSON file, but the content of that JSON file, which is basically this very long string here. You paste that here, click Save, and then conversion is actually set up to talk to Google Play. Also make sure that you actually choose your app name here for the Android package name. After that, yeah, click Save, and then we are ready to start and ready to create our products. So first of all, we need to go to our Google Play console again. And here we scroll down to in-app products or subscriptions. So we want to make, an, make a subscription here. So we click on that. But if you want to have one-time purchase, then you click on in-app pro products here. I click on subscriptions and you can see this is the one that I added here. It's active and each subscription or each product has this product ID, which is important here. If you want to create a new one, you simply click create subscription here. Then you give it that product ID, give it a name, a description. That is what the user will then see. You choose a billing period. So how often the user will be billed and you set a price. So you can also do that based on country. And you can also decide if you want to offer a free trial, if you want to offer that, um, People can resubscribe, all that stuff. That is all very individual from app to app. So I created that very basic premium subscription here, which should just give us yeah, some access to parts of the app that only subscribed members have access to. Like you can think of YouTube premium or so. Then if you have that, you take this ID and you make sure to copy it and head over to conversion to the dashboard into the so-called product center here on the left bottom corner. And here we have three terms that I think are worth explaining that conversion introduces here. On the one hand, we have permissions and we have offerings and products. So a product is basically the same as we would call it here in Google Play. So it's either a subscription or just a one-time purchase. You can see I added 
like a purchase to buy some extra coins. That's just something you would get once and not like every month or so. And here we have our subscription that we will focus on in this video. Then we have so-called offerings. So with an offering, we actually, if we click add it here to our premium subscription, we can have an offering that contains multiple products. So you can think of that if you give your users at the very start, like when they register, you have some kind of offer for them, like with a fixed price or so. And if they don't buy that, then at a later point, you could show them another offer, which would, might, which would maybe have like a discounted price or so. So that's how you can create different kinds of offers with the same products. So I will show you how you can create all that right after I explain permissions. A permission is basically just something yeah, that, uh, that tells you what your user is actually allowed to do. If the user is actively subscribed, then they will have this premium permission and will be, yeah, then you can just unlock specific parts of your app. So for the sake of this video, I just recommend you to do the same as I do here. So let's start by creating a permission, clicking create, permission. Um, you need to have an identifier, which will be important later. So here you just choose premium. The description is just for you. So nobody else will see that. And the products unlock. Well, here you can then choose the products that will unlock this permission when they actually purchased. So since you don't have products yet, uh, you can actually not choose anything here. Let's actually create a product first in that case. Mm, that makes more sense. So under products, create. We can also, we don't need to go to products. We can just create a product here. You give it a conversion product ID. You select the type here. So subscription with trial, non-recurring purchase or direct subscription. I did direct subscription here. Chose monthly as a duration. You just need to make sure that this is the same value as you have in your play console. And then you need to enter some store details. Like, uh, yeah, you can also connect conversion to the Apple store, which I haven't done here, but the Google Play one is important here. So the Google Play product identifier is basically this product ID here for our subscription. So we copy this, copy it over here, and then we can already hit save here. Since I already have that, I won't click save. And then you will have that here in your list. Next step would be to create an offering. So create offering. You can give it a name, like an identifier and a description. And then you simply want to click attach. So you want to attach a product to that offering. Select that here. You select premium subscription, attach, and then you click save. And finally, we can then also get to the permission. So we click create permission. Premium. So that is how I, I will call mine. You can, uh, yeah, again, give it some description and you now select premium subscription because when you buy this premium subscription or one that is active, you want to unlock this permission, which will give you access to some features in your app. So that is in our sample app here when this little green bar will appear that we actually have premium access. So far, so good. I know this was a lot of setup that we actually needed to go through before we can actually jump into the code. This is not because conversion is so complex. That's just something Google Play requires because in the end, all the inner purchases and subscriptions um, are managed by Google Play. So even third party providers like conversion need to follow their rules in the end. And also, yeah, just have some kind of infrastructure that works together with Google Play. But in the code now, it will actually get a lot easier. So that's really not a lot of code that belongs to this to make this work. Let's jump into Android Studio. And I've already prepared a very, very small project here. It just contains our UI and an almost empty view model here. Like we have our offerings, which is a list of offerings in form of a state. So it's a composed project what that will be and what we can get from that. You will all learn that here. And we simply have a Boolean state if we have the premium permission. So if we have that, we want to show that green bar that we, yeah, that we just have premium permission. And in main activity, we just have our lazy column, 
with our offerings in form of a list. Open this again here. You can see this is our list here, our lazy list with all of our offers. If you only created the premium one, then you will only have that. But the more you have, the more will appear in the list here. So by simply going to the GitHub repo down below, you will find the dependency you need for the conversion SDK. Or you simply write this off here and also make sure you have the view model composed dependency. These are the two that we need here. And then we can actually jump right into coding. So let's actually start in the view model because what we here want to do initially is we want to load all of our offerings. So I will just create a simple function here, private function load offerings. And here in this function, well, we just want to say conversion, which is a singleton here. So we can call that from anywhere in our code. And you can see these are now the functions we actually have here. We have check permissions, which we will need to actually check if we have a specific permission. What else interesting here? Yeah, you can also use it for notifications, which I'm not going to go into here. We want to use this offerings here. So you can see this takes a callback in which we will just get the result here. So the offerings in the end. And we can pass a new callback here, like an object colon conversion offerings callback. We can press control I in here, control A to select everything and enter. So here we can both catch errors, like if we don't have internet connection or so. And the success case, I won't do any detailed error handling here, but in here you would basically get all the info in form of a conversion error here, and that contains description, additional message, error code, all that stuff that's helpful. However, in the success, success case, we get this offerings, which is a queue offerings. So basically a list of offerings, but since it's not really a list, we need to get the actual offerings of that and put it in our state. So we want to say this at conversion view model dot offerings, so our state is equal to the offerings we got here as a result dot available offerings. And you can see that's now a list of Q offering, which we are interested in. So just as soon as we call this function and this fires off the success event, then we will simply update our state and show that in the UI. And I will replace this with unit. In the same way, we want to have a function that actually updates our permissions. So that basically checks, okay, do we have that subscription? Is it currently active? And if yes, then yeah, we basically want to reflect that in our state. So the other function will be a public function, actually update permissions permissions and here in this function we say conversion dot check permissions as i already showed previously and this time we pass a queue uh, actually conversion permissions callback this one here and this again will give us the error case and the success case i will ignore the error case here which you of course shouldn't do in your final app but for the sake of simplicity um let's take this permissions map now here in the success case and find out if we actually have the permission for our premium subscription. So how can we do that? That's in the end a map of string to a queue permission. So the string will be the identifier of our permission. If we take a look back in our product center under permissions, this is the identifier we're actually interested in. So that will be the key of our, of our map here. So what we can do is we can say, okay, our state has premium permission is equal to permissions at the key of premium written the same way as that, that is active. And if that's true, we want to assign true to our has premium permission state. And that's already everything for our view model. Now we can actually override or basically just implement the init block here. So we initialize both of that so we first of all want to load the offerings and then we can say we update the permissions we also want to call this function again later after we actually made a purchase so we actually directly see if we now got permission or not then heading back to main activity where we actually have our ui we want to first of all check here in our lazy column 
if we do have the premium permission. So I do have a reference to my view model here. That's important. So if our state from the view model has premium permission is actually true, we just want to actually add another items block here, a single item, and we just show our green text. So we can say text is equal to, yay, you have premium permission. Let's say font weight is bold. We can say modifier is modifier fill max width. We can make it have a green background as I did it and just add a little bit of padding here to make it really dominant. Now you see as soon as our offering state from the view model here updates. So as soon as we loaded our offerings from our dashboard, we get these in form of a list here. With that, we can display the offering ID here just as a text. Usually you would just have a normal name of that. I don't know if there is a name property. Um, but you would simply map that ID to your actual name then, or you otherwise would have just a button for your, for your inner purchase. However, if we then click on this text, on this item in our list, that is now where we want to make the purchase. So in our case, the subscription. So what we do is we say conversion dot purchase. <laughs> it's really that easy. And here we need to pass our activity. Um, so we can't do that in the view model because we need that activity reference, which we shouldn't have in the view model because that is now responsible for also showing that Google Play billing dialog that we can actually purchase something and that needs the activity to be attached to that. So we can just say this at main activity. If you do that somewhere deep down in your compose code, then you can also get that from local context.current and uh, simply parse that as a component activity that will also work for the product that we actually want to purchase. That's just it. Um, is it it? No, it's actually offering. Because our offering, as I said, is something that contain, can contain multiple products. And from this offering, we get this products list. And since we know we only have a single product in there, we can just say first or now and else we return it clickable here. If you have multiple products here, then you want to kind of list these, show these in a dialogue together and stuff like that. And then if the user picks one, you can simply purchase that. And finally, we need another callback, which will be a conversion uh, permissions callback again. We override these two functions. On error, well, yeah, here we can actually now show a little toast or so. So toast, make text. Uh, this at main activity, we can show the error description and we say toast length long and that show. And we can do the same for our success case. Here we could actually also just update the view model state. But yeah, we also have that check permissions function to do that. So here we would simply say purchase successful and then we also want to make sure to save view model update permissions just to update our ui in regards to that and with that we are almost done almost one last thing is actually we need to tell our app how it can talk to conversion so we need to initialize the conversion sdk that's something we didn't do till now I want to do that in an application class. So here in our root package, I will create a new Kotlin class, which will be called conversion app in my case, select class and make that inherit from application, application, override on create. And here we first of all want to say conversion dot set debug mode, because well, if we're testing, we should set the debug mode. That's relevant for the analytics in your web dashboard. So there is a separate debug dashboard. And then we want to say conversion dot, um, what is it called? Launch. So here we pass our context, which is just this in our application class. We need to pass a key, which you get from your dashboard. 
So if we quickly switch back to Google Chrome, then you can go to settings in your dashboard in the bottom left corner. And here you have a bunch of keys. So we are interested in this product key, which you can simply copy here. And that's what you need in your app. So going back to Android Studio, let's simply paste this here. You can also make this a constant, of course. And let's format that a bit. And then observe mode will be false. Well, observe mode, what is that? That's just used if you already have like an existing implementation of Google Play Building in your app with the observe mode, then you can basically decouple conversion from that and still use it analytics and stuff. But yeah, that's something we really don't need here. And that's already it for the initialization. Now we only need to add this app in our manifest. So we open that. Say name is conversion app. And that's really everything we need to do here. So if we now launch this app, I will probably still have the permission because I it's like linked to my Google account. But just to check if everything works here, let's launch it. So there we go. Yeah, and we still have premium permission. If we click this here, then it tells us you already sub subscribed to the premium access. Uh, we can also click manage subscriptions here and then in Google Play. We could also click on that and say cancel subscription. No, we don't want to pause it. Uh, we can say, yeah, I don't know, technical issues, continue, cancel subscription. And that's basically how you can test if you also properly handle that, that you then also remove the premium access in your app. Um, it will actually take three more minutes here until it will, until it will be fully canceled. So yeah, it actually works. I tested that here for the extra coins. You can see that's actually just a one time purchase. And you can do that the same way. So you just need to add a normal product for that. If you want to make a normal in a purchase, you don't need to change anything in the implementation here. So I think it's a really, really awesome SDK. Definitely do check it out if you plan to have an app with in a purchases and subscriptions. So I will link everything down below. I wish you an excellent day and I'll see you back in the next video.